Only ever impressive. The long contained. But never duplicated. 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 Genie of the lamp. There was only one man in the world that could do what you just saw. That is not hyperbole, it isn't nostalgia, it is unfiltered objectivity. What Robin Williams created with Genie was not just a masterclass in comedy, but proof that a voice, a single voice, truly can bring a character to life. In a year full of sequels, prequels, and live action remakes, going back and watching Aladdin put me face to face with a realization that should have been obvious. Sometimes, animation isn't just the best medium for a story, it's the only one. And I think that a lot of the conversation surrounding this year's Aladdin stems from something buried underneath the surface. People still don't understand just how immense of a talent is required to be a voice actor, to bring a character to life with nothing but sound. Robin Williams didn't just understand that talent or define it, he was a living embodiment of it. Those little phone calls where people let you know. <laughs> what? Yeah? <laughs> really? I, I took, took a, a dump, dump in your tuba? <laughs> Robin Williams was a stand-up comedian who literally went from tending a bar in San Francisco to performing in it in the 70s. And by the time he made his first TV appearance, he was an established comic. And that TV appearance would take him to film quicker than most. He'd be Popeye in 1980, then make another starring turn in Good Morning Vietnam, where we'd get this famous line. Good morning, Vietnam! Before making his way into the world of one of my childhood favorites, Hook. So what's the point? Point is by 1992, when Aladdin would finally hit theaters, Williams wasn't just a comic, he was a star. And stars didn't lead animated movies, at least, not at the time. Instead, voice actors were usually lesser known talents. Until this blue guy would change the entire animation industry. I don't think you quite realize what you got here. So why don't you just ruminate whilst I illuminate the possibilities? What's maybe most remarkable about the genie is that he is a direct reflection of Robin's talents. A man who could turn himself into anyone at any time. The genie is a million characters wrapped into one blue shape, and if you think that was the writers, you're wrong. There was a script, it's just that, well, Robin changed it. The genie was a character written for Williams, he was the guy, so much so that to convince him to take the role, the directors of the film animated one of his stand-ups using the genie. And when he did take on the role, it changed. How do you voice or even script someone who can turn into anything and anyone it wants? Well, you cast someone who can do that very thing. Robin would go into the recording booth and treat the script like a reference point. It was far from set in stone. He would spend hours changing, improving line after line after line. When one was funny enough, well, it needed to be funnier. And very quickly, Robin began turning the genie into other people. The ever impressive. This was also not in the script originally. Instead, when Robin came in and began improving with celebrity impressions, the writers went back and rewrote portions of the script just to put them in. And yes, some of the more politically charged did not make it into the film. But the ones that did were there and had to be rewritten into the script because they were that good. They became one of the defining elements of Genie's character. In fact, including the impersonations, Genie is made up of 60 different characters that Robin created. 60 different characters coming out of one lamp. If you want to court the little lady, you gotta be a straight shooter, do you got it? Robin was able to change the tone, the inflection, the mood of his voice in ways that very few people are even close to capable of. Chris Nashawati once referred to Aladdin as a film that works as a fun film for kids and a joke delivery system for adults. Robin's ability as a stand-up and a comedian in general didn't just let these characters live, it also allowed the animators to, well... That's it! Three. Uno, dos, tres. No substitutions, exchanges, are really fun. <laughs> what I think many people forget about voice acting is that it is inherently tied, at least in good films or shows, to the animation itself. For just a second, I want you to close your eyes and try to imagine what this genie looks like. What he's doing on screen. Be specific with your words. The deal is in the detail. Got it. Which I don't really understand because if she already likes you, why change? I told now close them again and try to imagine what this genie is doing. Oh, rule number two, 
I can't make anybody fall in love with anybody else. Mwah! You little... I can't bring people back from the dead. It's not a pretty picture. I don't like doing it! Other than that, you got it. Obviously, this is just a rudimentary thought experiment, but one that makes a simple fact abundantly clear. Robin's genie is warm, it's eccentric, and it allows the animators to match or just try to keep up with that energy. The film's animators called Genie one of the most challenging animation processes that Disney had dealt with, referring to the style as Zippy. From a purely visual perspective, Genie is inventive. The animators managed to play with a single character in hundreds of ways that were relatively unique for that era of animation. Sure, Ursula can do this, but can she do this, and this, and what about this? The reason the genie can is because of what I've seen referred to as elastic acting. Essentially, Robin's vocal tracks were able to stretch and pull the character in dozens of directions without ever snapping out of the mold of the genie, almost like a rubber band. So the animators in turn had the liberty to do the same. The genie could be a bee, he could be Schwarzenegger, he could be a slot machine, and you the viewer would always know that that is still genie. The best voice actors became their characters, and the characters are animated as that very thing. All too often today, we see the inverse, where a character becomes the actor instead of vice versa. Will Smith did an excellent job, but this is more the genie as Will Smith than it is Will as the genie, and that's in part because Will, as great of an actor as he is, is always kind of just Will. The character has to live in the actor, and so the wider the actor can stretch, the bigger the character can be. But there's more to this than just funny guy talks funny. All right! Yo, yo, woo, woo, woo. First, that fez and vest combo is much too third century. These patches, what are we trying to say? Beggar? No. Bringing an animated character to life requires actual acting skills. The genie is so revered today because underneath all of the jokes is that aforementioned warmth that makes him the true hero of that story. Robin's voice ranges from friendly to downright sad, and that range makes the genie both an immediately familiar and at once comfortable character as well as a sympathetic one. I think it's fairly easy to forget that if Genie was nothing but funny, he'd very quickly turn into an annoyance to the viewer. And I think that's because Robin was a man that knew the depths of both of these realities personally. Something you could see in all of his work. He knew friendliness, he knew funny, he knew sadness. And I think this ability to draw from the inside is what lent to a lot of his talent as both a comedian and a dramatic actor. The genie was a result of this. He was drama, he was emotion, he was comedy, he was happy, he was sad. He very much so was Robin Williams. In animation, it's become increasingly easy to remember a character's face. Their giant eyes, the way they shoot fire out of their head when they emote, the way their carrot nose, it's slightly off-centered on their face, but it's much rarer to remember the way a character sounds. I don't remember how the side characters of Big Hero 6 sound, I couldn't tell you how the fox from Zootopia inflects its voice, I forgot almost immediately after leaving the theater. Yet, after having not seen Aladdin in almost seven years, I sat down in front of it, and it was as though I was talking to my next door neighbor. Like the genie was someone I interacted with on a daily basis. I could never forget those sounds. And I think that maybe that's the mark of a truly generational talent. I will always know who the genie is. I'll always know that voice. All too often, I think we as human beings say things like, I'll never forget you, or your memory will live on in me. And we don't really mean it. But for millions, including myself, the genie, Robin Williams is a part of us. His voice, his presence, his talent, forever living on in every single person that got to see a struggling genie finally set free. Genie, I'm... I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> Me too, Al. No matter what anybody says, you'll always be a prince to me.
That is a big wrap on today's episode of Nerdstalgic. If you enjoyed it, as always, press the like button to see more stuff like this on the channel. Better yet, if you did enjoy it, maybe press the subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss any episodes of Nerdstalgic. You can also hit the little notification bell next to it. That little bell is really important. It just makes sure you guys are actually notified when uh, an upload goes up on the channel. It helps the channel and helps you... Uh, see the stuff on the channel, so press that little bell. And on your screen right now are two more episodes of Nerdstalgic. You can click on either of those to see more from me and this channel. And I will catch you guys in the next video.